Okay, uh, so this week, what I really want to talk about is details and adding details to finish off and, and get to a more complete um, state with, with your models. So up to this point, we've been modeling a toy car, um, but outside of class, you guys have been making your robots. So I'm going to demonstrate this on robots because I think it's going to be more analogous to your specific needs. Certainly, this could be applied to the race car as well. Um, but if we, as we looked at some of these reference images, and you know, reference image, images are great for many things. Uh, one of them is kind of to identify what the details are that you can add. So in this one, we've got some rivets. Um, you can see there's more rivet detail here. It's popular on robots. We've got also this kind of the seam work and extra layers, which are nice. Um, you know, we've got joints. We've got exhaust. We've got a windshield wiper. Um, we've got tire treads, some more inlay details, exhaust vents, access panels, um, kind of little rims and lips. We've got this really nice serial number nameplate thing going on here. Bunch of different options. So let's uh, let's try to incorporate some of those into our robot. Um, the first thing is that I think we could talk about is kind of vents and to a certain extent control panels um, I think this will probably take the most time so I want to get to this first when you're thinking about where you're going to place these things like vents you know they can they can require a lot of geometry to, to define the shape right because uh, if I just find a quick reference image okay so here's a bunch of vents, and almost certainly it's going to require a decent number of edge loops to make these. But let's say I don't want to kind of muddy up my robot with a ton of edge loops. So what I would do, and this is a extremely simple example, um, is just kind of make it make it a separate object and the way that I would do that so I've got those and we'll kind of scale them apart uh, is I'm going to basically outline where I want my vent to be in edge loops oh, I don't want offset loop I want insert edge loop and then okay so let's say we want a exhaust vent kind of right up here right in the back um, and that might be a little bit wide, but whatever, that'll work. So what we can do is if I've defined the place that I want this, I can delete this face and then just add a new object. Or I already have the shape defined, right? So I can just go to my uh, mesh, edit mesh, and I can just extract this. So edit mesh extract. I want to separate the extracted faces so it becomes its own object and click extract. Now it's two objects and I've got this one face that I can start making my vent from. All right. And so to make the vent itself, uh, I think the way that I would do this, uh, okay, so the way that I'm gonna make this vent is first I'll select the edges and I'm going to extrude the edges out and just kind of scale them that way and then to try to keep them relatively even actually I'm going to undo that extrusion and I'm going to extrude again and I'm just going to adjust the offset because that's going to keep them even automatically okay so I'm looking at, at these reference images and I'm going to do something kind of like this just kind of a, a pretty simple one um, so I've got that created and I want a little bit of depth to it so I'm going to extrude those faces out okay, that's already looking pretty good uh, next we need to define oops uh, kind of the perimeters of where I'm going to cut out the vents, right? So I'm going to, whoops, 
insert a couple of edge loops here. And then I'm going to scale those apart so that they kind of spread out. So that will define kind of the left and the right side of my vents. Uh, so now what I need is all of the horizontal lines to actually create the cutouts. So I'm going to insert edge loop tool, equal mul uh, multiplier, and then I'll just pick a nice even number of like, let's say 24 is probably excessive. Let's go like 16. Okay, and add those there. That looks good. So now I'm going to select every other face here. Like that. And I'm going to extrude the face. I'm going to move it in and up. All right, that looks good. Yeah. Um, yep, and then I'm just going to delete those faces. So now I've got the, the holes for the vents. And um, what's nice is, again, I've kept this entirely separate from the back piece. So it's kind of this nice modular design. Now, if I smooth this out, you can see that it needs a little bit of extra work to stay kind of sharp. So then you just need to add a couple more edge loops. Whoops. And when I say couple, I don't mean 16. So I'll add... Oops, okay, so right now this is going to make me add these edge loops individually, and I don't want to do that because I'm lazy. And laziness can sometimes be a good thing because it makes you think about the fast way to do things. So before I delete these back faces, I'm going to add my edge loops now because it's all still connected, and that is better. Um, I'm also going to add... Well, there's not really an easy way to add those edge loops. I'm um, also going to add an edge loop around the perimeter here, and there, and there. Okay. So as we go into smooth view, we can see what that looks like. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, so now the last thing that we can do is delete those faces. Um, yeah, so tell you what, here's a faster way to delete these faces. If we kind of pull that out for a second and delete these vertices or select those vert vertices. Okay, shift or command right click to bring up our selection menu and go two faces and then two contained faces. It's only going to select the faces that those vertices, you know, define and, and surround. So it just selects those back faces and then I can delete those. And then I can go back into object mode. We can set my translate Z back to zero. And that puts it in the right spot. And there is this nice detail vent. Okay, and obviously you can make that more complicated. You can have different sections of vents and different angles and what have you. But uh, so that's how we would do the vent. Likewise, on the front, you could do the same thing for a control panel. Okay, is you can separate that out. So maybe on the front here, this is going to be unusually symmetrical, but that's okay. Um, I can select. Let me let me think how I want to do this. Um, so this this control panel I want to be kind of recessed. So I'm going to extrude the face and move it in just a little bit, and then I will uh, go to Edit Mesh and Extract which separates it, 
And I'm going to select this body. I'm just going to select, oops, object mode. I'm going to select all of this and put it on a layer so that I can hide it easily. Layers, layer from selected. I'm not going to name it, shame on me, I know. Uh, okay, so here's the base of my control panel. And let's say we want maybe a row of like light up buttons on the top. Um, so that can be really simple. That can be as simple as adding a cube down here. I can delete this back face. Oops. Object mode. I need to bring this up and position it accordingly and make it way smaller. Oops, not in that direction. In all directions, there we go. And then maybe make it even smaller there. I have to frame it up. Okay, so this is going to be a pretty standard light up button here. Um, let's see if I can still get away with changing that to two. No, I can't. Okay, fine. All right, so now if we smooth it out, it becomes very round. So we just need to add some edge loops to sharpen it up. So select an edge, insert edge loop tool. Again, I'm going to set the multiple edge loops to two. Add them there and scale them apart. I'll keep it a little bit round. Okay, uh, and then G. Oops, I guess that doesn't really want to do that. There we go. Scale those apart vertically. And then we need same thing here. And we'll scale those apart. Yeah, so now if I smooth that out, that looks like that could be a good button. Uh, and if I want to add a little bit of extra detail, which why not? Because I can take this center face and extrude it, scale it down a little bit along the X and the Y, and then just push it in a little bit. Okay, so now when I smooth it, smooth the uh, object, I just have this just a little bit of detail there, which I think is kind of interesting. Okay, so then we can um, we can now, if we snap the pivot point here to the back vertex, we can then snap this whole button to the surface of my control panel. I think that might need to scale down just a little bit more. We can position, whoops. We can position this, not there. Turn off snapping. We can position this up here. then we can duplicate special then let's say we want four more let me reset the tool four more copies and we will translate this over um, 0 0.1 and we get special okay so now I've got a row of buttons. If you wanted to make this feel a little bit more cohesive, we can insert a couple edge loops here, and I'm going to scale them closer together so they're even, and then we'll put them right about there. Maybe scale them a little bit more. Okay. Then let's insert a couple more edge loops. Like that. Make sure they're even. I'm going to jump into the front view so I can really make sure that they're lining up about as evenly as I can get them. Maybe scale them apart a little bit. Okay. 
Now I can take this back face of the control panel, extrude it back a little bit, and then extrude it back a little bit more. I think that'll work. And now my buttons have a little recess to sit in. And if anything, though, that this cutout should be a little bit tighter. Um, so I can select the, all the vertices and just kind of scale them. Scale them in a little bit closer so that it feels more intentionally uh, machined. Okay, maybe scale them in this way. Actually, scale all of those in a little bit there. Okay. So that's how you could add some buttons. Um, you could do the same thing with lights. Uh, if we wanted to add like a big warning light, I'd probably start with a sphere. And we can rotate this 90 degrees on that axis. It's going to be a fairly small thing, so we can set the subdivisions to 8. Okay. And we can delete the back faces. Oh, there's a cube down there. Why is there a cube down there? Oops. Object mode, there we go. Delete that cube. Whoa. There we go. Scale, whoops, scale this down, put it roughly into place, maybe scale it down a little bit more, and then for this light, I want kind of a housing collar type situation, so I'm going to Select this back edge, and again, it's. I'm using the same, I don't know, three or four tools this whole time as it's extrude, it's edge loops, and then rotate and scale, and you can get a, a really decent amount of detail here with not a ton of effort. So I've got that back edge selected. I'm going to extrude it and just scale it out a little bit, and then G to repeat that extrusion, scale it out some more. Repeat the extrusion, move it back a little bit, and then repeat the extrusion, move it back some more, and then once more, just add that little control loop, and then one more time, and this time I'm just going to scale it down, I'm going to wireframe so you can see how much I'm scaling it down, just a little bit, just give it kind of a lip because it's just going to sit right on the surface there. Um, there we go. Uh, I think that will work. Oops. Object mode. Uh, again, I can turn on point snapping. Snap my pivot point to the back of the light. And then I can snap the whole light to this plane. Uh, now I've got a large warning light. Oops, I'll do that to turn off snapping. Uh, maybe want to add just a touch more detail. Uh, something that I can do is I'm going to select these front faces here, and I'm going to extrude them out a little bit. Something like that, and then I'll select these front faces, and I'll extrude those out a little bit, and why not, let's do the same thing with just the front eight, and extrude those out a little bit. Okay. Uh, then I can go back Oops, into edge mode. Insert edge loop tool. We'll say multiple edge loops, but just one, so it goes right in the center. And add one in the center each there. And then 
Oops. I can just kind of scale them down. Just a little bit. Add some detail. Uh, actually, I don't like that. I'm going to change my mind on that. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to... I didn't like how that looked. I'm going to undo the extrusions and do it a slightly different way. Instead of extruding and pulling them out, I'm going to extrude them and just scale them down a little bit. I think that's going to look a little bit better. Oops. Whoops. Make sure we have just what we want. G to repeat, scale it down. Again, just along the X and the Y axis. And then we can do the same thing here. With the front. Extrude the face. Scale it down. Whoops. Scale it down just a little bit. And then when I smooth it out, you can, you can barely see it, so... I need to add a few more edge loops, um, and I'll do this really quickly. You can be more precise and more even with this, certainly, but uh, for the sake of time, I think I will just kind of power through this a little bit. Oops. Ooh, clipping. There we go. Add one there, one there. Oops, not there. There. And then there, there, there. Not there. That's not going to do it. Uh, so we smooth that out now. Okay, and now we've got a warning light. The only thing I would like to do is, in my mind, this front part is glass and this back part is, is metal. And I just wanted to find that a little bit more. Whoops. So I'm going to do what we did on the tire. Last last week, I think last week. So I'm going to select this whoops, this face ring. So select one face, hold down shift, double click on the face next to it to select the ring, and I'm going to extrude the face in a little bit, and then do it one more time. I'll bring that back. There we go. There. Got a warning light. This isn't really as round as I would like it, so you know maybe I'd go back and, and make that more round. But again, you make one, you can make two or three. Maybe one is red, one is yellow, and one is green. You know, be whatever you want it to be. Um, you know, kind of repeat as necessary. Actually, I think just overall they're all too big, so I'll just scale them, scale them all down. That looks good. I'm just going to scale them this way. That looks better. Okay. You can do the same thing with buttons, um, dials, uh, things of that nature. You can even add in this control panel. Uh, if we insert a couple more edge loops here, maybe we'll put one there. Need one about there, and one about there. As we can extrude these faces back a little bit more. Now something like that. Now we'll need some. Whoops, edge. There we go. We'll need some more edge loops to make sure that these transitions stay sharp, which we would need anyway. I've been holding off on adding the edge loops because it's, I don't want it to get too complicated too early, but we'll obviously need them. Just go through and add a bunch. Okay, and then you could put another face here to be a, to be a sheet of glass, so it looks like there's this kind of glass, then you can texture this back part to be a dial or a meter or something uh, of that nature. 
Uh, although that also means that I probably brought that too far back, so I'm just going to bring that forward a little bit more. That's better. Okay. So there's a pretty quick and easy control panel. You turn on the rest of the robot. Now we've got a control panel, and we've got a vent in the back, and suddenly this box is looking a lot more robot-y in not a whole lot of time. Uh, so that's control panel and vents kind of checked off the list. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is kind of seams, kind of seams. No, I actually want to talk about seams. Um, so I guess we'll start on the arm as a simple, the simplest example of this seam. So I want this arm to stay blocky. Um, so I guess the first thing I need to do is add some edge loops so that when I smooth out the arm, it stays smooth. I'm just going to make things easier. And actually, this should probably be two separate objects so that the forearm can telescope, but it's fine for now. It will get the point across, I think. So now when I smooth it out, you can see it's whoop, still more or less... There we go. More or less the shape that it should be. I just want it to be more, not less. Oh my goodness. Okay, we'll go into edge mode. It just doesn't want to. Please, whoops, not there. There we go. I just had to do it the right way. Okay. So let's say we want to add maybe a seam right around the the shoulder arm area here. The way that I would do that <clears throat> is actually very similar to what we've done with the creases before. As we can just add uh, one edge loop and then um, let me just think about this for a second. So if you want something kind of subtle you really just need three edge loops. And so we can add one edge loop and then if you hit shift right click in edge mode We've got this offset edge loop tool, which I haven't really talked about because it's not a super, it's not necessary, but it can speed up the workflow. And the way that this works is we'll add an edge loop on either side of any given edge loop. So I've got this edge loop that goes all the way around my arm. If I click on that edge loop, you can see it adds on the top and the bottom here, it's adding edge loops. Let me, there we go. And then I can drag left and right for how close are far away from the uh, the edges that I want it to be. So we'll go pretty close and it left the bottom one a little bit further away than I'd like so I'm going to pull that back up. And so easiest way to get a crease is just select that middle edge loop and scale it in a little bit. Okay. Scale it in and probably needs to scale in a little bit more in that way. Well, actually, maybe a little more this way. Okay. And then you'll need another edge loop on the top of the bottom here to keep that sharp. And now we smooth things out. And now I've got a nice little detail crease. Again, that's just a couple edge loops on a scale. Um, and I think that's a much more interesting arm than this one. Uh, you can get a little bit more complicated with it just by the number of edge loops and how you add them. So here now I'm going to add, I'll do this all just kind of manually. So I'll insert an edge loop here, insert an edge loop, say so maybe there, face. Um, I'm going to select this whole face loop. And I can extrude that out. And I'm just going to adjust the thickness. I'll hold down control so it's fairly slight. Good. So I've got the thickness established. Now I'm going to hit G to extrude it again. And this time I'm only going to adjust the offset. Okay, this basically gives me even ed um, edge loops on the, on the top and the bottom there. Uh, and then we just need to go 
back into edge mode and a couple more edge loops one there and one there and now we've kind of created this segmented part of the arm okay uh, with this inside crease you could also instead of scaling one edge in you could do you could scale a face loop in and it would just be a little bit thicker um, a little bit maybe more well defined so if you wanted like a channel running around um, you know you could certainly do that maybe I'll do that down here if we want like this um, then we can select this face loop extrude it in just adjust the thickness kind of like that and again we need to add a bunch of edge loops because that's obviously not how we want that to look in its final form so uh, let's see do I want to add any more to the face no I don't so I can edge insert edge loop we got to do the same the same whole song and dance that we did before and then on these in there and then we can check if we hit three on the number pad we can see that's still kind of smooth in there so we want to add one there and there and remember how close you move these edge loops will define how sharp that corner is. So if you do want something softer, you can certainly do that. Um, so something like that I think works. And then I know I need to add that edge loop up there too. So am I missing any? No, that looks good. Should move that up. Yeah, no, that's good. All right. So now I smooth it out. And now we've got a nice little detail part down there. Okay. The the details are, are huge here. Uh, you can see that my control panel cut out and actually my, my vent cut out uh, are both in need of some extra edge loops as well. So I can go ahead and add those. We want to add it on both sides here just to make sure that it stays sharp. Now that is the this is the advantage of doing this with a more cubical uh, cubic cubic shape is that if I start adding all these edge loops on rounded surfaces or spherical surfaces, you'll start getting flat spots. Um, so be careful of that. You may need to. Um, do a little bit of manual adjusting. Um, I can also show you another way to get some details here in just a second. Uh, we also need there, and there, oh, and there. Okay. So feeling pretty good about that. Um, so another way to kind of get this panel -y look, and there's a the, that robots uh, reference images is a great example. So let's say we wanted to do something like this. All right, where we've got this kind of molded, formed, metallic cap on the robot. Well, to do that, um, the way that I would, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think probably making it a separate object. But you just kind of select select the faces that you want to be the shape and obviously you want to make sure that the edge loops are um, kind of define the, the area that you want it to so I can either extrude this and just adjust the thickness okay and by doing that I can actually add an edge loop around this crease um, or, let me think about this for just a second. Or I can um, go to Edit Mesh, and I can, uh, in this case, I'll duplicate, but I'll make sure I have separate duplicated faces on. 
And so now I have this whole separate object that I can go in and you know I probably want to extrude the face and give it some thickness. Oops. give it a little bit of thickness there. Oh, that's not an even selection. Oh well. We'll pretend it is. Um, okay, something like that. You can see when you smooth it out, uh, so we need to smooth both layers. And that... Oh, I scaled it. I didn't extrude it. That is a problem there. So when you select them both, extrude, adjust the thickness. Okay, and then you can add edge loops around. Come on. Select that. There we go. Add edge loops around to kind of crease that as necessary. Uh, remember, we also have the actual crease tool where you can select, you know, if you want this to be a little bit sharper. Select that edge, go to your crease tool, and you can kind of adjust that. You may also need to pull um, other edges around to get get that really doing what you want. But you can crease it that way. Okay. With that, let's say we wanted to do just a little number plate. Um, we could either, or not number plate, like a serial number, um, you know, logo name, brand type thing. I think I've got, where is that example? There it is, something like this. You could either duplicate those faces, duplicate those faces, or we can do a little bit of projection. So I know we had mixed results with projecting surfaces on other surfaces before, but let's try this again, shall we? So I'm going to add in my plane. I'm going to make it nice and simple. Well, we'll go like uh, subdivisions. We'll go four across the width and two across the height. No, three across the height and five. We'll do that. And then we'll do a height of 0.4 good and we need to rotate this negative 90 around the X I don't know why there's another plane there I can delete that okay now I need to get this roughly into position so this is going to be kind of on the lower back of, of uh, this robot's head Uh, and also, before I forget, I want to insert whoops, insert an edge up down there, help it maintain its form. That's better. Okay. So for projection, and it, it, I have found that projection tends to work better when you just create the objects and don't do a ton to them. But the way it works is you set your live surface, and you select the object that you want to project. And we can maybe scale this down. It's a large number plate or nameplate. Uh, and then you can select the vertices and just move them, and it will conform. With it, one thing you can check is in your move tool settings, you've got the move snap settings when you've got the live surface. Um, you want to make sure you retain component spacing and have face center and vertex unchecked. Um, I believe that's the problem that I was having last time I tried to show you this, is that I think one of these was checked and I didn't have retained component spacing. So check that, that'll give you most likely uh, better results. So now that I have my, well, it's actually, I could probably stand to go back a little bit more. That's pretty close. Close, but not exactly there. Let me select just those. 
Yeah, it doesn't really want to. Oh, you know what? It is. It's because the surface is currently smoothed. So if I unsmooth it, you can see that it is, in fact, exactly on there. Um, it's because it's going to the actual where the where the mesh actually is, not the smooth preview of it. So that's that's my mistake. Okay. So now once you have your nameplate kind of established, um, then you can go into face mode, extrude the faces a little bit, you know, and start really modeling your, uh, your nameplate. That I want to cover in this video is um, as we're modeling these machines, machines need to be held together by fasteners of some sort. Sometimes they're held together with welds, sometimes it's nuts and bolts, sometimes it's screws, sometimes it's rivets. But I want to talk about the nuts and bolts and the and screws. So as a way to kind of quickly um, establish the method of construction. And I just need to quickly add a, whoops, come on, come on. I just need to add a edge loop there and there. Uh, as a way to quickly establish method of construction, you can just add screw heads or bolt heads in places. You don't have to model the whole threaded bolt. You can just worry about the head of it because that's the part that you would end up seeing anyway. So if we look at references, of bolts. You see there's a few different varieties. Um, often it's this hex head fairly flat bolt. Um, there's an eye hook bolt. This one is a as a hex inset on it. That one looks like it's a star keyed. Um, you know, some of them are more rounded. Uh, so you got a bunch of different options there. The rounded one is probably the easiest one to make because really, all you, I don't know why I keep adding things here. Um, all you really need to do is create a very simple sphere. So you can do like six and six. Okay, then just delete the bottom faces, all of the bottom faces. There we go. Um, oops, I actually do want faces. Kind of scale that down a little bit. Scale it in that direction. And then you want to add just a touch of detail. Select that leading edge. Extrude it down a little bit. And then extrude it one more time. And scale it in. Oops. Scale it in that direction in. Okay, and what that does, I can go a little bit more, is that when you smooth it out, it just gives it just a little bit of a lip, um, makes it slightly more realistic. And so, once you create that, uh, I'm going to recenter the pivot, so modify center pivot. Once you create that, now you just have to put it into place. So, we can rotate it 90 degrees. And let's say we want it up here, something maybe like that. That's still enormous. So we can scale it down some more. And to snap it to the surface, we can do the same thing we did down here with the buttons and the lights. Turn on point snapping, hold down the D key, snap it to one of these back vertices, and then Turn on point snapping and snap it to the surface. Turn off snapping. And just move it in the X and the Y direction. And now we've got some bolts. And maybe we can duplicate it and move it over there. Okay. That's the simple bolt. Uh, let's say we want to do a um, a hex insert or inset then we can start with a cylinder. I'll move it over here so we can see it. So hex stands for six. It's Greek. Greek for six, I believe. Yeah. Pretty sure it's Greek. Um, 
So we set the subdivisions to six. Then we can select the face. We're going to extrude, scale it down, extrude, move it down. And there's your hex inset. Obviously, you'll need some edge loops to uh, keep everything sharp. Um, but that's really all you need. You can delete the bottom faces because you'll never see them and just, again, position it in the right spot. Um, I think the probably the most complicated that you'll need would be a Phillips head. And so that'll be the last one that I do. I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, and I'm going to hide the robot and I'm going to move those to my Oops. Move them to my robot layer. So, Phillips head. Uh, Phillips head is going to be two parts. So I'm going to establish the outline of the Phillips kind of inset. Um, and for those that don't know, the Phillips head screw is the, the plus shaped screw. Um, I'm going to define that shape, and then I'm going to define the main part of the screw, and then we will connect them. So let's start with just the Phillips head and I'm going to add a plane. And we can keep this really simple. So we can bring the subdivisions down. I think to five is perfect because uh, that gives us There's our Phillips head inset, right? Uh, now we need uh, the rest of the screw. So we're going to add a cylinder. And I'm going to jump into wireframe here real quick. When I connect them, I want the same number of vertices. So I'm going to set the, the subdivisions for the cylinder to be the number of vertices around the perimeter of my Phillips head. So if I count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so set my subdivisions to 12. Oops, 12, there we go. Uh, and now I can also set my radius. Oops, I'm gonna jump into the top view so I make sure I get this right. Actually, radius of 0.6 looks pretty good. I'll stick with that. Okay. Now this works. Uh, I've done similar things before. Delete the bottom faces. And then I select these top faces. Turn on grid snapping. Just move them down to the grid. I'm going to extrude these faces in. Just kind of scale them in a little bit. Uh, and it really doesn't appreciate that because you're, you're, it creates overlapping faces. So I'm going to undo that, and instead I'm going to select the outside edge and just scale that out. Same, same result as I get this face loop, and that's really what I'm after. From there I can select all these center faces and delete them. Uh, now with my Phillips head, I want to do the same thing as I want a face loop that's going to go all around the whole thing. So I'm going to select that border edge. I'm going to extrude that edge just with the offset and hold down control to get just a little bit. That looks perfect. I can, I'm going to leave those faces there. So now I just need to combine the two objects. Turn off grid snapping. Uh, combine them and then uh, I need to just snap these to the grid. Now, uh, the I want the vertices to line up a little bit better than this. So I'm going to undo my combine. And this is 12, uh, 12 sections. I want to rotate this so that I get a, a, a flat edge on top. So 360. I'm going to use a calculator because I really don't feel like thinking right now. Um, 
Oh, that doesn't work. Okay, my phone is acting up, so we'll use Spotlight. Uh, 360 divided by 24 is 15 degrees. Okay, because it's half of 12, and I want to only rotate this halfway. So I'm going to rotate this around the y-axis, 15 degrees. There we go. Now I can combine them. Uh, mesh combine. Jump into edge mode. And hope that this lines up perfectly. And it does. Lovely. From here, it's just a matter of doing some extruding. So I can extrude that down. And then maybe I, I want to scale this in a little bit. That looks good. And then um, let's see. I'm going to scale this out and move it down. And then I'm going to insert a couple of edge loops here. Where is my... There we go. Insert a couple of edge loops. And then I can move them up. And now i got a nice little screw head. And then if we extrude... Again, this is just to kind of get that nice finished edge here. And scale that in. Okay. So there's my screw head. It's enormous, so we need to scale that way down. Move this up. And I don't know where we want to put this screw head, maybe. Let's rotate this 90 degrees. Maybe we'll put it like here, something like that. Okay, and again, you can snap this to the surface the same way. Focus on that. Turn on point snapping. Hold down the D key. Snap it back to a vertex. I don't think I'm on the right vertex. That looks good. And then move that back and snap it to the surface. There we go. Okay, turn off snapping. Now we've got a little Phillips head screw going on. Lovely. And that needs <laughs> I need some edge loops to define it, but you certainly get the picture. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm what I'm looking for from you guys for for details is you know, add some fasteners, add some buttons and lights. Again, we we're going to be texturing these and you can add, make the lights actually light up and glow. Uh, you know, play around with different textures. Uh, it doesn't have to be super complicated. You feel free to break up your mesh. I would say save a different version, and I actually I haven't saved this, so shame on me. Um, I should set my project to this, and then I should save it as details. Um, goes in the scenes and save. Okay. So yeah, that's what I'm looking for, and I think that you know that little bit of work made this robot look a whole lot more feasible than the three cubes that it was uh, beforehand.